everyone. Welcome to MGS Coaching Football, and thank you for watching my channel. I do really appreciate it. Non-subscribers, I'm hoping that you'll push the button and see what the subscribers have access to on all my various videos and covering all kinds of things from 3-4 defense all the way through some triple option stuff and eventually someday some zone raid offensive things, etc. So thanks for watching. Today, we're going to talk about in our continuing series on our version of three match that we call cover 10. We're going to learn about how we would cover what we just simply call the smash out concept. It's a variation of smash. Okay. So cover 10, three match versus two by two smash out. So we'll show you how we cover it on both the match and the zone side. Okay. I'll go through the assignments on the match side first, then the zone side, and then over here, in the diagram, I'll go through the particular coaching points that we give our players on both the match and zone side in, in, in terms of the differences between how you would cover it on a match side versus the zone side, okay? So first up, the match side, the dime. Well, right over here, for us, we predetermine which is the match side by basing it on the pass string. So if it's Liz, the match is on the left and the zone side would be on the right. Can you uh, tweak that, of course, based on opponent tendencies, game plan changes, etc.? Absolutely. But for the purposes of this video, it's to the pass string. So here would be the dime. The dime is going to uh, carry the number two corner route. The field corner is going to take number one's out, right? Because he has number one out or vertical. The backer in this case is going to match up with number three. And what I will do is I'll show you how number three impacts both inside linebackers. And then the free safety makes a carry call, which means if two's vertical, he will carry it. But he will end up playing the middle third because number two's on the zone side is running a corner as well. Okay, so non-subscribers, I, I, I run a mirrored concept just to show you how we cover it on both the match and the zone side. Okay? So now on the zone side, the rover, the outside linebacker, is the fourth rusher, right? He's the read rush, and I'll get to that in the diagram. The Mike is the hook curl defender. And he'll end up, because of the concept, matching up with number three, depending on what number three does, right? So remember, I'm going to save these two inside linebackers for last. The boundary corner is our deep third on the zone side, cluing number two. Okay, hearing and signaling, and I'll cover all this when we get to the diagram from the free safety by way of the whip. Okay, he will end up taking the corner route by number three, because that's his deep third threat. And then the whip will screw down on the snap. And again, I'm going to go over that in due time, but he will end up taking the number one out over here, and he'll undercut that. Okay? So those are the assignments for both the match and the zone side. So now over here on the diagram, first thing I'll do is I'll draw the smash out concept on both sides in green. Okay, so for us, the out is four to six yards. It's a speed out. And the corner, anywhere is from 10 to 12 yards on the corner. Okay, this would normally be, for us, a three-step, okay? Could be a five-step, could be play action, not, not as likely. Could be an RPO, again, not as likely. So there it is on both sides, right? Match side, zone side. So as far as our two vertical defenders, Dime has two vertical, okay? or out, Frio Corner has one vertical or out, okay? First thing, though, is 
all of our past offenders read their por their portion of the surface, which in the three four is the uncovered lineman, which in our base three four front is going to be the guard. Okay, non negotiable. They all read the same uncovered lineman. That's their portion of the surface. They read him to see if he's getting a hi-hat read, right? He will tell them whether or not it's pass. So we always say read the surface for run pass direction, okay? So we're going to show you right now the surface is giving him the hi-hat. So he lines up an outside shade. Okay, sometimes we'll, we'll line him up in his normal alignment. Non-subscribers push the button, and then he'll stem out to the outside shade on the snap. Right, all depends on a lot of things. For the purposes of this diagram video, he's going to be outside shade. He gets the hi-hat read, so now he's going to carry the vertical of number two. When it becomes a corner route, he will maintain that vertical leverage, meaning on the upfield shoulder. Okay, that way he's in a position to play downhill on the football. He could stay under here, but then if the quarterback throws him, because remember, this guy's going to leave when I, when I get to it, right? He's spinning middle, making the carry call. I would much prefer having the upfield zone leverage positioning on the corner route. Okay, so when he crosses tracks, we teach center field baseball turn rather than crossing your feet right here. Snap your head around, okay, and get back into position. That's what we teach. I mean, if the kid's not athletic enough at the college level to do that, then we made a mistake somewhere in the recruiting process, right? So that's the coaching points as far as how the dime covers the corner route field corner same thing he's got a zit step walk pedal but the boundary he sees that now he's got his eyes here we do not teach getting the vertical pedals we teach tempo pedal so we don't create too much separation so now he will plant and drive come downhill to cover that out route if he gets too much depth that's an easy completion and now the, the, the uh, receiver's got the ball in his hands at four to six yards turns up field an easy six seven eight nine ten yards before contact we don't want that okay when we talk about zone coverage we also talk about not creating separation receivers want separation we always want our guys to be within striking distance huge coaching point okay and so since the field corner has one vertical or out. He's got to make sure he's going to got the ability to plant and drive and close that gap quickly, okay, before the ball gets there. Because if the quarterback's reading properly, he should be trying to throw that now when he sees that he's carrying the vertical, okay? Now we get to the – so as always, sorry – it's much easier to cover this concept on the match side than it is on the zone side, as we'll see. All right? So now he's made the carry call. He's communicated it verbally, but that we also use hand signals, and we do that. So on film, where there's no sound, we don't let players say, I said it. No, you're going to show us you signaled it by the hand signal, which I'm not going to divulge here in the video. Okay? So it's both said and signaled. And then he communicates the same, and they communicate back. So we also make all three both say it and use the signal for the same reason. So he's, you know, both says and signals, and he doesn't signal back. This kid can't say, yeah, I got it. Well, you didn't signal, right? So always have something to hold your players accountable with. All right. So we get through all of that. Ball snapped. He sees, boom, he's got the pass. He spins middle. And, oh, by the way, the verbal part of the communication is Roger. So the two safeties are spinning in the same direction. Okay? He sees he's got the vertical by two. So he's working to come over here. Once it 
becomes a corner, he sits in the middle third, reads the quarterback. Okay, quarterback indi indicated to us is the front shoulder, the shoulder closest to you. It's not just the eyes because quarterbacks are taught to look you off. Okay, he can look this way, but the indicator is the key. Now, if he's good enough where the indicator and his eyes are in the same direction, well, then he's pretty good. So the coaching point that we give is you get to the point where you realize he's not going straight vertical or post. He's running away from you. Get into your pedals and now keep head on the swivel, maintaining eyes on the, on the uh, quarterback's front shoulder. That's the indicator. The biggest one is when the front hand comes off the ball, then he's going to throw it. At that point, you are hustling in the direction of this indicator when that front hand comes off. Okay? So don't let your guys get fooled by the eyes or even sometimes, you know, a real cagey veteran quarterback fooled by the eyes and the indicator is the front hand off. The front hand's on the football. He can shift the indicator, and in right? So that front hand off. And there are simple drills you can do to teach that. Okay, so that takes care of our secondary defenders on the match side. Again, we're coming back to these guys last. So let's now come over to here, okay? First thing I'll do is I'll talk about the rush defender or read rush. What's meant by the read rush? Most of the time, not always, but most of the time, it's built in the defensive end on the zone side Versus pass. So, again, same thing. Our coverage defenders on the zone side read the same portion of the surface on their side, which is the uncovered guard, right? So, they're going to also get the hi hat. He doesn't because he's locked into a tight end. In this instance, he's locked into the tight end, okay? So what we teach our outside linebacker, what we call the attached outside linebacker, which means he's on a tight end, all right, is this, <laughs> knockback. Same thing our defensive line does. <laughs> Get a fistful of the tight end. We are very good at knocking back and getting hands on a tight end, which means we're disrupting his getting off the football. All right? So... These guys are screaming pass, which alerts him. And the coaching point here is as soon as your shoulders and or hips or both turn, let him go. You've disrupted his release off the line pretty good already. And, of course, tight ends are taught different ways to escape, you know, club, swim, rip, all the different things. But nonetheless, <laughs> Our guy's locked in. So once he lets him go, all right, defensive end is taught to rush up into the B gap. The read, option one is beat him with speed, meaning the tackle. If the offensive tackle, sorry, if the offensive tackle has vertically set, and he has made it his work not to get beat with speed, then we allow the rover to rip up underneath. Okay, to rip up underneath. So that's the read. Now, let's get back to our coverage guys. Okay? The first coverage guy, since I've already covered our spin middle safety, is our third. Okay? Same thing. Zit step. He's going to walk pedal. He sees he's got pass, so now he's cluing number two. Right? Clue two. Deep third, clue two. So now he's going to get into pedals. Tempo pedal to match the tempo of number two. Meanwhile, he's got to keep an eye on number one. He sees he's got the out route. Now, he will get even closer 
to number two to the point where his thoughts and his thoughts are tight ends going vertical. So we got an inside outside bracket on number two to the zone side. Got an inside out bracket. I'll cover what do you do if it's an out and up and he's, oh, we're going to get to all that. Remember, he's screwing downhill. So as he gets here and this becomes the corner out, he's taught the same thing in that get on the upfield shoulder of the corner route. He doesn't have to baseball turn. He should already be in a position where he's above this. Okay, he's seven yards off the line of scrimmage, which is different than the outside linebacker dime to answer that question. So he's already... Not to mention, remember, he got held up on the line of scrimmage. It's easier for him to get on that upfield shoulder. Let's just say he hasn't done his job properly if he has the baseball turn. Okay? So that's how that's covered. So it goes from an inside-outside bracket to the same coverage here as over here. Just It's easier for him. So now let's get to our safety who's going to screw downhill. We show the same picture to quarterbacks pre-snap. Ball snapped, now we move, okay? So as he's coming downhill, if we always say, hey, if you can reroute two, please do, but the tight ends are taught to avoid that. So if you can, great, but it's not likely, okay? So this route's going to become a corner route at 10 to 12, as he's coming downhill, he realizes that's not going to be a threat to the curl. So now as he, as these two pass each other, right, assuming there's no contact and all those things, his eyes now got to go to number one. Is he the curl threat? Is he the flat threat? And obviously, he's the flat threat. So as he comes downhill and recognizes the out route, That's where he's going to take number one out and undercut it. Okay? Once he's eliminated, number two is the threat to the curl of the flat. His eyes go to one, and when he sees that, he sprints to undercut it. And then, let me do it back in green, if this were to become an out route, he will take it. So the corner knows he's got help if it becomes an out and up. Okay, the safety can help him with that. And then obviously he'll see the ball thrown. He can break on it. It's not that difficult. Okay. So that's how we take care of the same smash out concept on the zone side. Now let's get to our two inside linebackers. All right. Here's what happens. He's We're going to start on the match side. Backer matches three. So basically, it's three to me. If he's in protection, okay, that's his key. He'll rush it. If three's in, in protection, he'll add to the rush. So now it became a five-man rush. So what we teach is... The hand of the quarterback, okay, and or, depending on uh, tendencies, the nose will rush to the A-gap to either the quarterback hand or to the match side, okay? So in this case, we'll have him rush to the match side. So he'll rush A-gap left because it was a Liz call, Liz, 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 okay? He's got outside cage, automatic. So now that would mean he would add to the rush B gap. So we have gap integrity. A, B, C, B, possibly A, okay? Now let's not forget we got him, and I'm going to get to him right now. On the hook curl, okay, he pivots. Two's vertical, so there's no th hook threat from him. Eyes go to one. He's out. There's no curl threat from him. He pivots back. 
And now that's where he's also going to match and see what number three is doing. Because that's the only other threat there is for him right now. And so three goes away. He's going to spy. So if three's in the protection, we're going to end up with a five-man rush with a spy. And so that accounts for this open A gap. The spy's got it. So there's no place for the quarterback to tuck and run. He should have some pressure on him. It's a five-man rush. Okay. We've got the, the out and the vertical covered over here on the match side. We've got the out and the vertical covered over here. Okay, so that's how an R of three match cover 10, we cover the what we call smash out concept on both the match and the zone side. So as I said at the beginning, I thank you for watching. Not subscribers, I hope I teased you into pushing that button.